Athens, Georgia, and sold out Sanford Stadium will be rocking. It's familiar territory for South Carolina quarterback Zeb Nolan, who grew up just six miles from here in Watkinsville. His parents traveled the country when Zeb played for Iowa State and North Dakota State. Tonight, Travis and Julie drove just 10 minutes to watch their son play between the hedges. South Carolina off to a terrific start, 2-0 tonight. A very tough test as they take on the number two team in the country, the Georgia Bulldogs, already with victories over Clemson and UAB. Hi, everybody, and welcome. Sean McDonough along with Todd Blackledge. Delighted to have you with us. We'll be joined in just a moment by Molly McGrath. And certainly, Zeb Nolan's one of the great stories in college football so far this season. He arrived in Columbia, South Carolina in May to be a graduate assistant coach. He thought his playing days were over. But they had injuries in the summer at quarterback. He had a year of eligibility left. Next thing you know, he's a quarterback. And as we said, he has led them to a 2-0 start. The coaches say his story is a movie script. We'll see what the next scene is like here tonight. Well, yeah, I think what we'll find out in the next three and a half hours, is it going to be a Disney film or a horror flick? Because make no mistake, this Georgia defense he's facing, they are legit. They are fast all over the field. They're furious. They love to create havoc and get after the quarterback. And I think the key for South Carolina in this game is their defense, which has played very well through the first two games. They have to play outstanding and keep their team in the ball game tonight. It's also possible we could see Luke Doty at quarterback tonight for South Carolina. He was to be the starter at the beginning of the year, but he got hurt in camp to pave the way for Nolan. There's a question as to who will start tonight at quarterback for Georgia. With more on that, down on the field, here's Molly. Well, Sean, head coach Kirby Smart told me moments ago that JT Daniels will start at quarterback for Georgia, but Stetson Bennett will see playing time in the first half, saying they both earned the right to play. He said his message to Daniels ahead of the game was play within the offense. Don't look over your shoulder and try to do too much. And he said that Daniels is really eager to play. He says he's 100% and has no limitations from that oblique injury. And the Bulldogs led by head coach Kirby Smart. I'm about to take the field before more than 92,000. One of the great scenes and venues in college football sold out for the 53rd straight game. The Dogs started the year number five in the preseason poll but vaulted to number two after that opening win against Clemson in Charlotte. They're in the top three in the country for the fifth straight year. And now Zeb Nolan who grew up coming to Georgia games. And South Carolina 2 and 0 oh, with wins over Eastern Illinois and East Carolina a step up in class tonight for the Gamecocks the opening kickoff in a moment. You're watching college football presented by Subway. And this is the SEC on ESPN. Saturday night in Athens, always fun. Warm and humid, 81 degrees and sticky. South Carolina won the toss and deferred so Georgia will receive the opening kickoff Kenny McIntosh back deep it'll be Mitch Jeter to kick it away for the Gamecocks virtually no breeze as this one gets underway. McIntosh takes a knee two yards deep in the end zone. Well, here comes Georgia led by JT Daniels junior from Irvine California transfer from USC made five starts for the dogs the last four of last season all the victories and the season opener in Charlotte that win against Clemson but he did not start 
As we noted a moment ago last week against UAB with an oblique strain, the coaches believe he's back fully healthy. Deep stable of running backs on whom they expect to lean heavily tonight. Zamir White gets the start on the left hip of Daniels. Out of modern day high school, the powerhouse in Southern California. Comes out with a play action pass and he's right on target to the tight end, Brock Bowers. The true freshman who's their leading receiver. He's been tremendous to this point of the year, already 10 catches. Very smooth, very athletic, came in ready to play right away as a freshman, was benefited because of some injuries to some older guys ahead of him, and he just stepped in and took, took the job. 21-yard gain. Bowers from one of the great places in America, Napa, California. <laughs> They send him in motion. And now it's the run with Zamir White. Their leading rusher from last season. Zach Pickens made the tackle for South Carolina. Right away a player down too. It looks like Sherrod Green, one of their leaders, a linebacker, veteran player. This defense has played extremely well now, albeit not against the same level of competition for two games that Georgia faced, but very similar numbers. But he's one of their real leaders, and this would be a big loss if Green is not able to continue. And obviously in tremendous distress, Shane Beamer is the first-year head coach at South Carolina and a very early concern as they tend to Sherrod Green. Entire Gamecock team out there to offer their well wishes to their teammate Sherrod Green, 50 year senior linebacker, who unfortunately has battled injuries throughout his career. He was a starter back in 2018 and 2019, but suffered a hip fracture in the opener last year against Tennessee and missed the rest of the season. Now you can just see how well liked and respected he is among his teammates. Already a boot around his lower right leg. He was at the bottom of the pile and they fell on him. So after just two plays from scrimmage in this game, Green, one of their key players on defense, departs. He'll be replaced by Damani Staley, who's another experienced yeah. player. Well, he had a huge, senior. Yeah, huge play last week against East Carolina. They were down 14 to nothing, and right before halftime, he was able to intercept the pass, return it for a touchdown, and and that kind of turned things a little bit for South Carolina because they really struggled in the first half on the road. Well, that's, you just hate to see that. The guys work so hard and train and prepare and they're excited about new coach Shane Beamer and a 2-0 start and, and to have to leave the field like that is it's just sad. Gamecocks a big underdog here tonight, 31 points. Swing pass in the flat to Kenny McIntosh inside the 40. And down with a first down at the 37-yard line, a gain of 11 for the Bulldogs. Accurate throw. We talked about Brock Bowers, number 19. Watch him as a blocker here. We know he's a receiver, but out leading the block, he gets the key block along with Fitzpatrick, 86, the other tight end. And that's what you need. Great blocking on the perimeter. This is a very physical perimeter blocking team, the Georgia Bulldogs. Still without some key wide receivers. George Pickens, Dominic Blaylock, the tight end, Darnell Washington, also sideline. Here's McIntosh. Ahead for a couple. Tackled by Jalen Foster, a safety. Here are the Chick-fil-A impact players. James Cook, we'll see him rotating in with Zamir White and with Milton. He's kind of the, the dual threat. Out of the backfield, good receiver. Brock Bowers, we've already seen him. A couple of the, the standout players for South Carolina rushing the passer, veteran guys. Cook on the field now on the right hip of the quarterback, JT Daniels. 
Play action pass, plenty of time and an open receiver. It's Lad McConkey, and it's a first down to the 22 yard line. Great protection. It's kind of a layer route. He's got McConkey running the crossing route, sees him right across the middle, and a good accurate throw with a clean pocket. For a 12 yard pickup, they went quickly to the line of scrimmage. Cook through a big hole, cooked into the end zone. Touchdown, Georgia. Twenty three yards for James Cook as they go seventy five yards in just six plays against Shane Beamer's defense. Jack Podlesny to attempt the extra point. Jake Kamar to the holder. The kick is good. It's 7-0 Georgia. Sean, you mentioned they went with tempo, and it caught South Carolina a little flat-footed. They weren't quite in position. They went with a quick play. They pulled the backside guard and tackle. The front side tackle, Warren McClendon, number 70, with two outstanding blocks on the play. But it was the tempo that Georgia used that really caught the South Carolina defense off guard. James Cook from Miami. Brother Dalvin Cook of the Minnesota Vikings, the former Florida State star. So an early hole for South Carolina. Mentioned a big underdog on the road, but when they came here two years ago, they were 24 and a half point underdog. Zeb Nolan was not on the South Carolina team then. South Carolina won here in 2019 in double overtime. Well, we mentioned this Georgia defense. Uh, they are fast and they are very aggressive rushing the passer and I would anticipate them on blitzing Zeb Nolan a lot. The key for Zeb Nolan is going to be to get rid of the football, get it out of his hands and be more accurate than he's been the first two games. He's only completed about 57 percent. He's got to be much higher in the game tonight. Hooking knuckleball kickoff by Camarda and it'll be a touchback. No chance for Juju McDowell to bring it back. So here is Zeb Noland, the 24-year-old, just turned 24 a month ago. Big guy, 6'2", 235. His third start all this season. Easy win on opening day against Eastern Illinois. They had to rally on a walk-off field goal to beat East Carolina in Greenville, North Carolina, last Saturday. That field goal to end it gave South Carolina its only lead of the game. Mom Julie on the left, Dad Travis, a high school coach just down the street at Oconee County with a big win last night. In attendance here tonight. Nolan not known as a runner, keeps and gets corralled after a two yard gain. Nolan Smith ran him down. It's just to show the Georgia defense a little something. I mean, you're right. Nolan's not going to impress anybody as a runner. Luke Doty is the running dual threat quarterback. But that play is just to keep Georgia's defense honest. Again, they're a fast pursuit defense. That's the kind of play just makes them have something else to think about. Kevin Harris, the running back, looked like movement before the snap in a false start. Lots of activity along the offensive line. Ken Williamson leading our SEC officiating crew tonight. This was just Eric Douglas, the center, didn't false snap start. the ball. Offense number 79, five-yard penalty. It remains second down. Well, playing this Georgia defense can make you a little jumpy. And anxious, Shane Beamer said he thinks this could be the best Georgia defense of all time. Kirby Smart wasn't going to go anywhere near that far down the road, but they have not allowed a touchdown on defense. The only touchdown scored against them was last week by UAB, and it was on an interception return by the Blazers. Kevin Harris stuffed for no gain by Nolan Smith. Well, they've got an anchor in the middle of that defense. In Jordan Davis and the linebackers play downhill. Georgia not ready for the quick snap and Nolan's on target with a deep strike to Josh Mann who's tackled inside the 20. A touchdown saving tackle by Amir Speed. 
Well, we saw Georgia catch South Carolina with tempo. Now South Carolina does the same thing. Quick snap, good protection. The receiver runs right by speed. Perfect throw by Nolan and a huge play for the Gamecocks early in the ballgame. For 58 yards, Van is their deep threat. South Carolina has been a huddle team in the first two games. That tempo surprised Georgia. They're one of the few teams that does huddle regularly. Harris did well to get back to the line of scrimmage. Good penetration by Amir Speed, the cornerback. There is a weakness, or at least a question, about this Georgia defense. It is in yep. the defensive secondary. When you have four guys drafted off of your out of your secondary a year ago, that makes a difference. Six defensive players drafted, four of them were secondary players. Kind of a new look defensive secondary for the Bulldogs. On those four DBs, Eric Stokes taken in the first round. Nolan, look out! He ducks under a hit and went down at the 19 with N'Kobe Dean chasing him from behind and Adam Anderson ready to tackle him if he didn't duck down. Well, watch N'Kobe Dean. I mean, this is what Georgia loves to do. They love to blitz their inside backers. They're so fast. That's what forces Nolan out of the pocket. In the win against Clemson, N'Kobe Dean blitzed 15 times. Whether it's a run or pass, they love to pressure inside with those linebackers. Third down and 12. They hit for 58 on the last third down. Nolan hit as he throws. It's a loose ball. Adam Anderson got to him. And the ball is smothered by Dylan Wanham. And where are they going to spot the ball? I think his arm was coming through. Adam Anderson is the guy who's going to get the pressure. Great speed rush off the edge. Beats the right tackle, but I think Nolan's arm was coming through. The ball just hit somebody in the, in the helmet. That's why the ball went backwards. By the offense, the previous play is under review. By Mickey Haddock, the replay official. Seven nothing Georgia, just underway in Athens. Presented by the Eat Fresh Refresh at Subway. And in part by Barbecue Guys, for those who were born to grill. While we were away, the referee, Ken Williamson, announced that this was, in fact, a forward pass, and clearly so, incomplete. Hit Jalen Nichols in the back. So they'll bring the ball back to the previous line of scrimmage, the 19. It'll make it a much shorter field goal. And as you could see during that play, Jalen Carter of Georgia stepped on Zeb Nolan's hand. He was in pain, and they've been working on him on the South Carolina bench. So here's Parker White, excellent field goal kicker, has six game-winning field goals in his career. Fourth quarter or overtime, and that one is good from 37. Good job by the holder, Kai Kroger, to get down a high snap. So the pass play to Van on the third down, officially 61 yards, and the longest pass play this season for Shane Beamer's team and the longest allowed this year by Georgia. We had a career game last week in terms of yardage receiving. Great first catch in this ball game. Just ran right by Amir Speed. That's Travis Nolan, who is Zeb Nolan's dad, as we noted earlier, coming down to check on his son. That's Luke Doty, as we mentioned at the outset, was to be the starter this year. That was the plan coming out of spring practice, but he suffered a sprained left foot in August, and that's when they decided that Zeb Nolan would give up being a graduate assistant coach and become a quarterback again. And the thought was, I mean, when he's healthy, Doty is our guy, but we just want to make sure he's 100% healthy before we, we do anything and make that move. But now it might force their hand if, uh, if the hand injury is significant to Zeb Nolan. Doty does give them much more of a running threat. He's an excellent athlete, played some wide receiver last year. In addition to quarterback for the Gamecocks, Mitch Jeter kicks off. 
And it'll be a touchback. And let's check in back in the studio. Here's Matt Berry. Guys, good evening. Happy college football Saturday. Ohio State made this thing interesting. They got some padding late. C.J. Stroud to Garrett Wilson. They get the win. Not as impressive as many people thought, 41-20. So we have Clemson fans asking, where did the Clemson Tigers go? We can't explain. They've been moved to ESPN News. When Mississippi State and Memphis go final, we will move Clemson to ESPN2. We're getting ready for the whiteout, Penn State Auburn on ABC. So first and 10, JT Daniels flips it forward to the touchdown score, James Cook, who runs out of bounds after a short game, pursued out by TJ Sanders in the middle of that. 4-2-5 defense for South Carolina. New look for them with the new coaching staff. Coach Nolan heading back up to sit with his family. They beat Thomasville last night, Oconee oh. County, to go to 4-0. Right? He's built a powerhouse yeah. just down the road. And I'm thinking his wife sent him down on that mission there to make sure <laughs> Zeb was okay. Plenty of time for Daniels and on target. A.D. Mitchell, Adonai is first name, but they tell us he prefers to be called A.D. He's a true freshman. That's his third catch of his career as a Georgia Bulldog for 14 yards. Really good start for J.T. Daniels. Very efficient. He's five out of six now with that incomplete pass, his first incompletion, trying to get it to Marcus Rosemey Jackson and Marcellus Dial in coverage for Carolina. It was interesting when we talked to the Georgia coaches, we talked to Todd Monken, okay, what, what's special about JT? That he's elite in his preparation in terms of what he can take from the meeting room to the practice field to the game. His pre-snap understanding is second to none. And when he has a clean pocket and weapons around him, he's really, really good. Five-man rush, it's a screen to the tight end, Brock Bowers, and he's tackled by Damani Staley, who is the son of Deuce Staley, great player at South Carolina, went on to a long career in the NFL yep. and is now coaching with the Detroit Lions. You know, just back to JT, well, what he doesn't have that maybe Stetson Bennett does offer is he's not a real mobile guy, can't extend plays as well with his feet. But my personal opinion is Georgia is a better football team with JT Daniel as their starting quarterback. There is some debate about that in this part of the country. Third down and five. And Daniels on target to Bowers. First down back into Carolina territory. Staley on the coverage and uh, David Spaulding in on the tackle. They're really spreading South Carolina's defense out and JT Daniel is just kind of finding the matchup. Deep shot. And he has a man running wide open. Touchdown to Jermaine Burton. Again, it was a tempo play, Sean. They caught South Carolina flat-footed. Cam Smith is their best cover corner, and he was beaten badly on this play by Burton because of the quick snap and the tempo. That's both touchdowns Georgia has scored in the first quarter have come off of tempo plays. 43 yards to the sophomore from Calabasas, California. Jermaine Burton. They had a 73-yard touchdown from Stetson Bennett last week against UAB. You wouldn't know it, but Unga's happy. Well, take a look at Burton. I mean, we'll, we'll show you at tempo. Here he is, but watch these players right here. They're all still moving around. And the corner, Cam Smith, is totally flat-footed, and Burton runs right by him. That looks like Georgia against UAV a week ago. Apparently, they're going to take a closer look at his right hand. Even the support people here in Georgia are coached up to hit the quarterback. Jake Camarda to kick off. 14 to 3. Impressive start for the second ranked team in the country. 
Directional kick. And a big hit delivered. Adam Anderson blasted Jalen Brooks. So here's Luke Doty making his first appearance of the season. As we mentioned, he was the starter out of spring practice, but then sprained his foot in mid-August and has not played. He did play late in the year last year against Georgia. They got routed by the Bulldogs in Columbia. And as you can see, he had good numbers in a 45 to 16 loss. I'll tell you what he showed in that game was toughness because he got hit a bunch at least 19 times, kept getting back up and throwing the football. Ball start, offense, 75. Justin, turn of time, the tackle. Here's Molly McGrath. Well, Shane Beamer told me Luke Doty was limited in practice all week, didn't fully participate in the live practice until Thursday. He said it wouldn't be fair to play him after so little practice time, but he was available in case of emergency. And with Zeb Nolan back in the locker room for evaluation, he did walk back towards the x-ray room uh, for Georgia. So this is definitely an emergency, Sean. And you just wonder, you know, one of the things he brings is his mobility. Disconcerting signals on the offense, number 17. Five-yard penalty, it's first down. I think he meant defense, yeah. the Kobe Dean. You're not allowed to make hard calls or signals that are similar to what the quarterback's doing, whether it's clapping your hands, whether it's shouting similar kind of cadence noises. Kobe Dean caught with that foul. But Doty, you wonder, Sean, how much will he feel comfortable using his feet, using his legs to make plays, coming off of that injured foot? Well, we talked to him on Thursday. He said he feels really good, that he's ready to go, and he expected to play tonight, despite what Coach Beamer said to Molly. Kevin Harris, boy, these dogs hit you hard. Nolan Smith and Lewis Seen. In on that tackle. A good hard nose run right there, though. Kevin Harris was a thousand yard rusher. Of course, Shane Beamer wasn't the head coach last year. He was one of the bright spots. Had a back procedure in the summer. He, he's kind of back into full shape, but he is a physical runner. It was a good run on first and short. He led the SEC in rushing yards per game last year, 113.8. They pitch it to Harris, and he's smothered for a loss. Back to the 31-yard line, Jordan Davis. Mountain of a man in the middle of that front three. And matched up tonight, this will be fun to watch against the center, Eric Douglas, and they were high school teammates, and they're great pals. They're from Mallet Creek High School in Charlotte. Just amazing how quick and athletic he is for the size he is. and. Uh, He's, he's kind of a marvel with that athleticism. 6'6", 340, and he can move. They had him at 20 miles per hour running down a play last week on his GPS equipment that they wear as part of the uniforms. South Carolina. Play clock was running down. So South Carolina uses a timeout. Well, let's take a look at Jordan Davis and, and what makes him special and why I think NFL people have really <laughs> changed their maybe tune about him. He's powerful and quick. This is stopping the quarterback on a quarterback run against Clemson. And then watch the pursuit. This is the one that every NFL scout is going crazy about. The effort play by a man that big running that fast for that far across the field in a game that they were winning big just shows you his effort, his determination, and uh, where he's taken his game. And, uh, you know, obviously for him, his weight has always been an issue. And staying at a, at, a, at a weight that is more conducive to playing more plays with better endurance and stamina, he's bought into that, and uh, he is off to a great start. Yeah, the effort's one thing, but to be able to run that yeah, fast. That's scary, right? <laughs> at his size, that was remarkable. Third down and two. Five and a half to go opening quarter. And they convert yeah. through the game cocks. Carry on Joyner. 
On the receiving end of the pass from Luke Doty. Good timeout by Shane Beamer to avoid the penalty, get the right play call, ball out of the hands quickly. There was pressure by Davis, but a nice quick throw by Luke Doty, and they moved the chains. Carry on Joyner's an interesting guy. He came to South Carolina as a quarterback. They still use him some at quarterback, but he's a, he's kind of a gifted athlete that they got to find ways to get the football. He played some quarterback last week in their win against East Carolina. Doty wants to throw it deep after the play fake, and it is caught wow. again by Josh Van. He had a 61-yard catch to set up their field goal. And now another long completion for Carolina. And this was well defended. Lewis signed the safety number 16. is going to come over and really try to rip the ball out. But what concentration going to the ground by Van securing the football with his right hand. Oop. Now we'll see. He was Four bouncing the around. Was a catch. The previous play is under review. Lewis Seen played that exactly the way you want a safety or a defensive back to play. It got his hand in between the arms of the receiver, trying to rip that ball out. Van trying to maintain control going to the ground. The ball was bouncing the whole time. I think it's fair when he goes to the ground, it looked like the ball was flopping around a little bit, not in his possession. Let's bring in Matt Austin for his first appearance of the night. Hi, Matt, you've had a busy day. You did a great job on that Cincinnati-Indiana game. <laughs> well, thanks, Sean. I agree with everything you said. Uh, he never fully controls this ball. You can see when he goes to the ground, it's lying on the ground underneath him. So this should be a pretty simple overturn. The bottom line is, though, that's twice that they've taken a shot to Josh Van. He's gotten behind the defense. And that was a nice throw by Luke Doty as we see Zeb Nolan coming back to the South Carolina sideline. Good play action pass on first down. Had a shot. After further review, the receiver did not control the ball as he went to the ground and it touched the ground as part of the possession. Therefore, the pass is incomplete. So no 43-yard gain. Definitely the right call. Well played by Lewis Seen, the free safety. The leading tackler, second leading tackler a year ago. The ball back on the South Carolina 35, second down and 10. Approaching four and a half minutes remaining in the first quarter. And Georgia leading 14 to three. Doty gets wrestled down as he gets it off. Tremel Walthour was there. It's an incomplete pass. He managed to throw it in the general direction of Juju McDowell. Well, this is a bust because the tackles block it in. Nobody blocks the defensive end. It's not a blitz. It's a four-man rush, but somebody has to block that defensive end. Doty does did what he could just to get rid of the football. But that's a miscommunication, a bust with the offensive line. You should be able to block four with five. Doty had to just throw that one away. It is a salty bunch of dogs on this defense. They had 10 sacks through the first two games of the season, seven against Clemson. And they've hit the quarterback several times tonight. Doty's pass complete. Carry on Joyner, he juggled it. Got ahead for about four, but nowhere near the first down marker. And South Carolina will punt. Kai Kroger handles the punting for the second year for the Gamecocks. Fourth down for Carolina. Lewis King with the stop for the Dogs. Pierre's Jackson back for the kick. Short kick and a fair catch made by Jackson. He's basically been only a punt returner because he's had a sore knee. He hasn't played much at wide receiver. 39-yard kick. Join us Monday night for Monday Night Football as we cap off week two of the NFL season.
on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and the ESPN app. The Lions and the Packers. Meanwhile, on ESPN2, Peyton and Eli Manning will be breaking down the game in various ways from their unique perspective. And speaking of the Manning family, there's Arch Manning, Peyton and Eli's nephew, son of their brother Cooper and his wife Ellen. Stetson Bennett at quarterback and Zamir White rips through. Arch Manning is a junior in high school in the New Orleans area. Top quarterback recruit, as you might expect, given the lineage. And the Georgia Bulldog fans are well aware that he is here <laughs> this weekend on an unofficial visit. They have a lot of recruits here. So Stetson Bennett after the play fake threw too high and it's intercepted. Jalen Foster brings it back inside the 15 yard line. So interesting that with the offense clicking with yeah. JD JT Daniels marching them up and down the field. They put Bennett in the game and his first pass is too high way too high for Brock Bowers. And another interception for South Carolina. They've had five now in two plus games. Uh, they've had two of those return to the house for touchdowns. This one was close to being another pick six by Jalen Foster. And you're right, Stetson Bennett, who was very accurate last week, just that ball just took off on him, had no chance. And I don't understand the urgency no. to get the other quarterback into the game. Still Luke Doty at quarterback. Here's the dimension he brings. Looked like he was going to go for a greater distance than that. But the great speed of the Kobe Dean, he was able to run him down at the nine after a gain of three. Yeah, he had a blocker out there. He had a tight end blocking, but the Kobe Dean came so quickly from the inside, he chased the play down. That looked like it had a chance to get close to the goal line, but the speed of the Kobe Dean just negated the play. Zeb Nolan has returned to the field from the locker room. They broke the huddle with 12 guys. Offense, 12 players in the huddle. Five yard penalty, second down. Well, those are the kinds of things you can't do no. as a 31 point underdog on the road playing the number two team in the country that may very well have the best defense yep. in the country. Yeah, you can't help them. And, and that's been an area really in the first two games. They had eight penalties in their opening win. Eight more penalties last week on the road against East Carolina, and you you just can't do that. That's already their second penalty of this ball game in the first quarter. Shane Beamer, their first year head coach, spent some time in Columbia as an assistant to Steve Spurrier. Coached here on Kirby Smart's first staff. Play clock has run out. They look really South confused, Carolina. really wow. confused right now out. offensively, whether it's the noise, whether it's out. just the communication of getting the play in, or whether it's just the fact that Luke Doty has not played enough to even be aware of the play clock. Whatever it is, they've got to get it figured out. And if they want their team to calm down, it would probably help if Shane Beamer and his yeah. assistants calm down a little bit too. Their offensive coordinator, Marcus Satterfield, I think he's in the press box. I don't think he's down on the field, so he's got to communicate down. They've got to get the signal or the call in. And uh, right now they've had to waste timeouts because they're just not effectively getting it done. There's Marcus Satterfield right in the middle there with the black hat taking a drink. Longtime friend of Shane Beamer. They started out in coaching together. 2002 and three at Tennessee. GA's under Philip Fulmer. Said back then, someday they would coach together again, and they are in the SEC as head coach and coordinator. They were in each other's weddings. Marshawn Lloyd trying to get around the corner. You just can't run away from anybody no, on this Georgia team. defense. That was Quay Walker, the senior. Ran them down. The only way you're going to hit perimeter plays is if they get fooled or they take a bad step or get their eyes caught inside. Because if they see the play and know where it's going, they're too fast 
to get the ball on the perimeter. Dan Lanning is the young defensive coordinator in his fourth year. Kirby Smart, longtime defensive coordinator at Alabama for Nick Saban, is very actively involved in the administration of the defense. Third down and seven. They can get a first down at the one. Dean Blitz. Doty stood in there. And the ball was not caught by Jalen Brooks. Right at the line to make. Another bust. Jalen Nichols. Here's Dean. Now he times this perfectly, but watch Nichols, the left guard, 52. He steps, he reaches, block the guy. If you block him, you give your quarterback a shot. And now after the turnover, after the interception, a penalty, a blown assignment, bad clock management, and they have to settle for a field goal. And you're not going to beat the number two team in the country on the road settling for field goals. Parker White. Started the year as the first returning four-year starter in South Carolina history. He's now the fifth-year starter at field goal kicker. And he connects again, this one from 27. So the field goal set up by the high pass thrown by Stetson Bennett. Yeah, I mean, it's a nice defensive play. Jalen Foster gets the fifth interception of the year for South Carolina, gets them deep into Georgia territory. Penalty, they're back. Missed assignment. Incomplete pass on third down. Now credit this Georgia defense coming into a tough situation and holding their ground, but they were helped by South Carolina's offense. Now you wonder, does he let Stetson Bennett go out again? and try to atone for that, or does he go back to JT Daniels? I didn't like when Molly said that, when he talked about both quarterbacks had played and earned a right to play. No, I don't I don't agree with that. No. I mean, Stetson Bennett did his job last week, filling in because JT Daniels was injured, and he played marvelously last week. But Georgia is a better team with JT Daniels as their starting quarterback. Let him play. Yeah, you'd made the decision he was the better choice to start the right. year. He leads you to a win, although it was with limited offense on both sides when they played Clemson in the season opener. But he was efficient, and he took care of the ball. Big kick by Mitch Jeter out of the back of the end zone. Here's Matt Berry. John, time now for our celebration moment brought to you by Allstate, SMU, Louisiana Tech, final play of the game, Oklahoma transfer, Tanner Mordecai, four touchdowns on the day. This made it five and for the win. Roderick Robertson to catch. How about that? Ponies, 3-0 and on the season. Fourth possession of the quarter, and it is. JT Daniels back in there. He led him the touchdowns the first two times. They had the ball with him at the helm. Samir White straight ahead. Many people think that Georgia has the kind of team, particularly with their defense and their running backs, to maybe challenge Alabama, to overtake Alabama. They've had great success under Kirby after that five-loss first season. They've been on par, but they have not been able to beat Alabama. I think they do have that kind of a team. I think JT Daniels is the quarterback they need to play. Kendall Milton straight ahead. Well, that's the next step. We said they've been in the top three in the country each of the last five years now. Here are the resumes in their careers. Bennett, of course, came here as a walk-on, was a backup, left to play junior college football to get some experience in the play. Yep. Wound up coming back here on scholarship. Daniels, the highly touted transfer from USC, where he started as a freshman, suffered a knee injury there. Lost his spot as the starter. And transferred here to Athens. James Cook. <laughs> Took the toss for a first down to the 37-yard line. Here's a look from the AT&T 5G Skycam. Another nice block by the freshman tight end, Brock Bowers. He's going to block in, coming off the motion. And Jamari Sawyer, the left tackle, with another key block as well. You know, back to the quarterbacks. To the credit of Stetson Bennett, the two losses he has were against Alabama and Florida last year, the two best teams in the SEC, the two teams that squared off in the SEC championship game. 
And when Daniels became the starter late last year, it was a softer schedule, yes. though they did beat a good Cincinnati team in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. You're watching College Football presented by Subway. This is the SEC on ESPN. Border battle, South Carolina and Georgia. These two schools about three hours drive apart. Warm and humid night. There is some rain in the area. Chance of some precipitation before we're finished. JT Daniels and the Bulldogs, number two in the country, lead 14 to six. Zamir White carries for about three. Here's Molly McGrath. Sean, South Carolina quarterback Zeb Nolan is not here on the sidelines. He came from the x-ray room holding his right hand. I'm told it is a right hand injury. He then went into their locker room. They will not tell me whether or not he's going to return, but Sherrod Green, their linebacker, will not return. He was just carted from the x-ray room to the locker room with a cast on his right leg and crutches by his side, Sean. Zeb Nolan's parents, Travis and Julie, concerned. Understandably so. He did return from the locker room at least for a bit. We saw four quarterbacks in the first quarter, two for each team. Here comes a South Carolina blitz. And they get to JT Daniels, led by Jabari Ellis. And their star up front, Kingsley, better known as JJ, and Agbari leading the way. Yep, good pressure. We talked about this. South Carolina defense has played very well so far. Georgia pretty much having their way all first quarter against this defense. There's a big chaos play created by the defensive front, which is the strength of this South Carolina defense. Coordinated by Clayton White, who was at Western Carolina, excuse me, Western Kentucky as the coordinator last year. And third and 14, they go to a draw to Kenny McIntosh, and he got within four of the line to make a 10 yard gain but the dogs are going to punt for the first time tonight with one of the best in the country jake camarda good stop by the gamecocks they got the field goal to make it a one possession game again now they get the stop and they'll get the football back josh van back for the kick from camarda was one of three finalists for the ray guy award last year's the best punter in the country Excellent kick. Van lets it go over his head and it goes into the end zone. Taco Bell welcomes you to the Live Moss Student Section of the Year contest. Great student section here at Sanford Stadium. Use hashtag student section sauce to get the committee's attention and to go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see how your school can compete. It's not Halloween. This is just standard yeah. fair here at Sanford Stadium or the student section. I think South Carolina needs to think about throwing on first down for their young quarterback, Luke Doty. Yards have been hard to come by. Play action pass, get the ball out on first down. They have 80 yards of offense, 61 of them on one play. Doty gave it to Kevin Harris, and he stacked up after a gain of one. Devontae Wyatt leading the defense. Channing Tyndall in there as well. You know, when Georgia knows you're going to throw, they're hard to block because they, they have great individual pass rushers. They have excellent blitzing linebackers. That's why you have to throw when it's a run pass down, when they have to guess a little bit off a of play action. And it's definite pass. They're too hard to block. Out of the pistol now. Harris running left and swarmed under. Perhaps a half yard. Channing Tyndall is having an excellent senior season. Part of a rotation at linebacker in on the stop. He's the fastest of the linebackers. Watch him pursue this thing down the line. They go quickly again to the game. Cox, they go deep wow. for Van, and he wins the one on one ball. Josh Van, and he is going to get a flag. You just can't do that. 
That's going to be called taunting every time. They're emphasizing that this year. We've seen it a number of times already in three weeks. Made a great catch and then woofed about it in the face of Darion Kendrick. And he'll be penalized for it. Yeah. I mean, Kendrick was in perfect position, but Van After just went higher over, for the catch. Unsportsmanlike like conduct. Offense number six, taunting an opponent. The penalty is 15 yards from the sitting spot. The down will count. It's first down. Good job by Shane Beamer talking to him about it. Not yelling at him, but just saying, hey, great play. Tremendous individual effort, but now we're back on our side of the 50. We cannot help Georgia in this football game. Note to college football players everywhere watching this. That is going to be called every time. It's a point of emphasis in the NFL this year, too, right? I mean, they're, they're talking about it everywhere in football. To Quandre right in now at running back. He's off to a good start this season. Welcome to the game, says Channing Tindall. He grew up in Columbia, South Carolina. Well aware of uh, the game, Cox. He was recruited by South Carolina, but chose to come here to Georgia. Very likable young man. We had a great visit with him the other day. He's become a leader on this team. And second leading tackler on the year. He was their leading tackler last week against UAB. Second down and nine. They had crossed midfield on the completion to Van as Pelley brought it back to their side. Doty sidestepped the rush and did well just to get rid of it. Jalen Carter the pressure and he threw it at the feet of Marshawn Lloyd. Well we were just seeing some whiffs up front. That time it was the right guard Javon Gwynn number 54 just whiffs on the rush. And Doty not only has to get rid of the football but loses his helmet. Now you're in that definite passing situation that the advantage falls to Georgia. And he had to leave the game because his helmet came off. So here's the third quarterback, Jason Brown, a transfer from St. Francis of Pennsylvania. Where he had a terrific career. He was a competitor for the starting quarterback job. After Doty went down, he is already running for his life and throws it away. Devontae Wyatt, 6'3", 315 pounds, nimbly making his way toward the new quarterback. Well, and you go back to the penalty, Sean. I, I mean, I know it was still a first and 10 after the penalty. It wasn't the yardage, but taking them back on their side of the 50 after the big catch by Van, and now they got to punt the football three plays later. Kai Kroger will punt. Here's Jackson back for it. Line drive kick. Played on a hop by Jackson. And he gets belted down by Jaheim Bell. 43 yard punt, five yard return. Well, we talked about playing against this defense is not fun. Would it be a Disney movie or a horror movie for Zeb Nolan? He's out of the game. Now it's Luke Doty. George's defense doesn't care. by Josh Downs. Second touchdown of the night. They would review it. He lays out pylon perfection. All Tar Heels early on the ACC Network. 14-0. All right, Matt, thank you. It looks like Zeb Nolan will definitely not be returning to the game with that wrap on his right hand. So it wasn't really the Disney feel-good no. story. Local boy returns. He's six miles away from where he grew up, the stadium that he came to as a kid to watch the Bulldogs. It wasn't quite a horror show either. And it was a freak play that put him out of the game. You know, it wasn't the hit, it was the step right there. A big man stepping on that right hand, his throwing hand, and the way it's wrapped up now, I mean, there's no way he can come back in the game and grab a football, let alone throw it. And he will be a great resource for Luke Doty. Yes. He was supposed to be an offensive graduate assistant. He had already started coaching, and they are very close friends. They both said they've become really close in a short period of time. Swing pass to James Cook. 
Speed up the sideline and he's out of bounds. There is a flag down. They started from the 10 yard line. While you were away at commercial break, there was a holding penalty on the return by Georgia. Assessed to the Bulldogs, so that brought the ball back. Block in the back, offense number nine. 10 yard penalty for the spot of the foul. First down. Justin Robinson's the guilty party. It was another great block by Brock Bowers, number 19, leading the play. There's the block in the back. Tried to pull off, but right in front of the official. There's Bowers doing his job. One good block, one bad block, and Georgia going backwards so far to start this possession. Or touchdowns on their first two possessions with J.T. Daniels, the starting quarterback, in. Then they put Stetson Bennett in for a series. He threw an interception. They seem to have lost their rhythm. The next series with Daniels back in there resulted in a punt. And here's Zamir White dropped by Daryl Ware after a short game. It's a big play right here for South Carolina's defense. They've clawed their way back in the game. If they get a stop on this possession, they can flip the field, change the field position, give their offense a shorter field. JT Daniels has time and throws incomplete behind his intended target, A.D. Mitchell. It's a really tough throw. He's rolling to his left. He's a right-handed quarterback. He kind of leaves his feet and tries to throw back across his body. Hard to be accurate on that throw. It was good pressure that forced him to get rid of the ball. Jordan Birch, number three, forced the early throw. Third down and six. Cook, the running back. South Carolina looking like it might bring pressure. Daniels on target, first down. Pierre's Jackson, his first catch of the season. Mentioned he was recovering from a knee injury. And they had been using him exclusively as a punt returner over the first two games. You know what he did that shows he's an experienced guy? He knew exactly what he needed for the first down. He got past the marker, showed the quarterback his numbers, and as soon as he caught it, he had the first down. 36 catches in the shortened season a year ago. He tied George Pickens for the team lead. Pickens, very talented wide receiver, tore an ACL in the spring, they think. They'll get him back at some point this season. After the play fake, the pass is over the head of Brock Bowers. Now you think about this Georgia team offensively when they get that guy, Darnell Washington, a tight end, and George Pickens back, and Kiaris Jackson at 100%. I mean, that, that's more weapons to add to this offense. And Dominic Blaylock. Yep. Also a key member of the receiving core. Kendall Milton, the running back, and he gets one. Nice tackle by Mohamed Kaba, sophomore from Clinton, North Carolina. You liked the South Carolina defense on tape in the first two games. I think we were both a little bit surprised by how they got hit early by Georgia. Yeah. I, I think they've kind of got their cleats on the ground right now. They're playing much more solid. It's really their front seven. You know, that's, that's the strength of this defense, and they're kind of settling into the game a little bit better at this point here. Excellent on third down in the first two games, as you saw, leading the nation in third down defense. Of course, against lesser competition. Eastern Illinois went 0 for 9. East Carolina, 2 for 16. Daniels on target, juggling catch. A.D. Mitchell out across the 40. And Georgia now four out of five on third down tonight after that 18-yard pickup. Well, this is great discipline by the young receiver. Mitchell knows the distance, gets there. Perfect timing throw by J.T. Daniels. And another third down conversion. It's now four for five for Georgia on third down in the ballgame. Daniels dumps it off for Bowers. Daniels pass is complete to Bowers. Short gain, just shy of the 45-yard line. Aaron Sterling made the play for Carolina. 
Seems like JT Daniels is getting his rhythm back now. Now that he's back in the game for a couple more possessions, he's a timing guy. I mean, he's, you know, again, he's not the mobile guy who's going to extend plays with his feet or with his legs, but he, when he knows where he wants to go with the football, he's very smart and he's very accurate getting the ball to his receiver. The top five running backs back from last season, they rotate them liberally. McIntosh was in for that play, the throw over the head of Justin Robinson. And here comes another third down. Cam Smith had the coverage. For Daniels, this is career start number 18, is sixth for Kirby Smart here in Georgia. Second this year for the end of last season. He started 12 for USC. In 2018 and 19, when six and six did the Trojans with JT as their starting quarterback. JT is seeing pressure right here. South Carolina showing pressure on this third down and then pulling out. Rushed four, and that didn't work as Daniels on target to Mitchell, true freshman from Missouri City, Texas, who enrolled early, got here in January to learn the system. Good protection, good read by JT Daniels and throws that ball exactly in the right place to the outside away from the defender. South Carolina is going to have to get up and try to get physical with these receivers, giving a little bit too much cushion. Yeah, There's a lot of cushion right here on the outside. Good job of picking up the rush on that last play by McIntosh, the running back. Daniels checks it down, juggling catch made, but for just a gain of one, it was Zamir White, the running back. There are flags down in the defensive secondary. Yeah, Adonai, Adonai Mitchell got dragged down to the ground, number five. He was the slot receiver running down the middle of the field. It was kind of an all-go route. They were trying to take a deep shot. Mitchell got pulled down. I think that's where the penalty occurred. Holding on the defense. Against the eligible receiver, 10-yard penalty will result in a first down. Jamar Brown, number eight, a backup safety who was in the game. Shane Beamer, of course, the son of the Hall of Fame coach, Frank Beamer, one of the great gentlemen who ever patrolled the sideline, great role model for Shane. Graduated from Virginia Tech. He's worked in some good places. We mentioned yeah. Tennessee with Philip Fulmer. He's with Steve Spurrier at South Carolina. Kirby Smart here. Lincoln Riley the last three years in Oklahoma. 44 years old. Very excited to have the job. He said he and his wife loved Columbia when he was an assistant coach there. Always hoped he'd come back. Called it his dream job. Daniels toward the end zone. Another open receiver behind the defense. A.D. Mitchell, a 38-yard score. Well, they tried to get Mitchell deep the play before. There was a penalty. This time he gets free. He runs right by the corner, Darius Rush. The only question was he bobbling it before he went out of the end zone, but another perfect strike by JT Daniel. I think Peyton and Eli Monday night need to talk about how much it seems that Cooper Manning is enjoying being here tonight <laughs> and cheering for Georgia. Yeah, he had a Georgia hat on. Cooper did down on the sidelines. He, he still does. Right and you could see him cheering. That touchdown wound up right in front of the Mannings. There's Arch, his son, top recruit. The bottom right of your picture, 21-6, Dogs. ESPN College Football Prime Time, presented by Subway, is brought to you by Allstate. Save money like a champion with Allstate. A great ceremony on the field before the game, honoring these five gentlemen known as the first five. They were the first five African-American scholarship players signed in Georgia history by the legendary coach Vince Dooley. Got a tremendous hand as well on the field before the game. Appleby, Kennebrew, King, Pope, and West. Appleby, King, and Pope right here 
from Athens and they were actually a part of the first integrated team at the local high school as well Clark Central but a display on the patio outside Sanford Stadium in their honor permanent recognition and yeah. nicely so of what they did here 10 years after the University of Georgia was integrated the kickoff will give Luke Doty the ball at the 25 yard line Georgia's defense is st still not giving up a touchdown this year this is their third game the only touchdown scored against Georgia this year was by UAB's defense on an interception return for a touchdown last week. Yeah, that was in the fourth quarter, and it was their third team quarterback, Carson Beck, who was in the game, who threw the pass. Doty, after the play fake, completes it, but his receiver, Nick Muse, fell down. No gainers, Matt Berry. Sean, we have a touchdown to the wideout between Penn State and Auburn. Sean Clifford does a good job buying a little extra time. When he does, he's got Jahan Dotson, corner of the end zone. 7-3, Penn State. Great scene up there in State College, Happy Valley. We saw the maze out last week in Ann Arbor, but that's the original, the whiteout at Penn State. Guido D'Elia, a good friend of mine. Yeah, put the down the pom-poms anytime you want. They, they were going to bring pressure, and there's a flag down. All-star, offense number six, five-yard penalty. It remains second down. What do you think of your Nittany Lions in the Big Ten? Boy, Michigan looks good. They do. Big win again today against lesser competition, certainly. And Ohio State's defense still has questions. You know, they just don't look as untouchable at this point as they have the last few years. Penn State, a big opportunity tonight against an SEC opponent, a physical Auburn team. With its first test under Brian Harson, of course, Iowa has moved into the top five. They're a legitimate team. The carry on Joyner separated from his helmet. The ball came out as well. Georgia says we have it. No signal to that effect yet from the officials. Channing Tyndall knocked the ball out. Here's my only question for Matt Austin. As soon as the helmet comes off, isn't the play dead? Down, then the helmet came off. That's why the clock was stopped. I mean, Ken so Williamson, I think, answered the question yeah. for Matt. And we pay Matt by the appearance. And we're trying to you know, watch the budget tonight, so. <laughs> If the helmet was still on, that is clearly a fumble. It comes out before he touches the ground. But the fact that the helmet came off plays rule dead right then. Kirby Smart saw him talking to the side judge, Rob Skelton. Timeout. Georgia. First timeout of the half. With 4.49 remaining in the half, and the number two team in the country up 21 to 6. Well, here's a look at the play again. Let's bring in Matt Austin. Matt, while we were away, the referee Ken Williamson announced that they are not going to charge Georgia with a timeout now. It's just an official stoppage in play. What do you think that is the result of? Well, well what I assume happened is that uh, Coach Smart asked the side judge a question, and the side judge may not have been able to answer the question, and they just wanted to make sure they got clarification for Coach Smart, just to make sure that everybody was on the same page. We give the, we give the coaches a lot of leeway in those situations. So all three timeouts left for Georgia. Defending a third down and eight. South Carolina three out of seven on third down. They've had some success launching it deep. Cody looked like he wanted to step into a long one again. A medium throw instead completed to Jalen Brooks. For a first down, they got 17 to move the chains. Great job by Doty, just moving up in the pocket. Georgia gets pressure, but he doesn't panic. He moves up, he keeps his eyes downfield, and delivers a nice throw for the first down. That was really well done by Luke Doty. Not panicking, just climbing the pocket enough to make the throw. Zeb Nolan with the headset on now. 
Great first down call. And just, the throw is just a little bit yep. too long. Josh Van has shown the ability to get open deep and win the one on one ball, too. That ball was just thrown too far outside. Van had separation. He was open. And the quarterback, Doty, just overthrew him. Van had his first career 100 yard game last week against East Carolina. When we spoke with Marcus Satterfield, the offensive coordinator this week, he said, He's really coming into his own, and teams are going to have to defend him with a bit more attention. He's made his presence known again tonight. South Carolina has to get the ball to Jaheim Bell somehow. He's not touched it yet. Harrison, deep trouble, and swung down for a loss. Devontae Wyatt. Well, this was supposed to be an outside run, but watch this pressure just cut the run off. They're blocking on the perimeter. This is supposed to fake inside and get outside, but he can't even get there because of the quick pressure by Jalen Carter, number 88. And Wyatt finished him off. They have just four returning starters on defense. Wyatt, one of them, with Davis, Dean, and Seen. They've become a program, especially on defense, where they just reload. The next terrific player steps in. Timeout called by Georgia. Prior to snap, timeout, Georgia. Coach Smart, a little upset with Latavius Brini in particular. This season, along with their contributions to the university's general scholarship funds for every field goal and extra point made, Allstate will also be donating to the American Red Cross to help with disaster relief efforts. Thank you very much, Allstate. Sean, right now, if you're Luke Doty, you can't make a critical mistake. Your team's played hard. There's 324 left in the first half. It's going to be hard to convert third and long here. Don't make a critical error on this play. Pressured immediately by Nicobe Dean. There's a flag down behind the play. Doty ran for a first down, but you'd suspect a holding call where that flag was thrown. Yeah, it was Nicobe Dean who was held. 71. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. I think third down. This is a really hard ask for a center like Eric Douglas with a guy this fast. There's the hold on the Kobe Dean. Comes right in the A gap. The center has to snap the ball first and get his head and eyes up. And all of a sudden, the Kobe Dean is by him. And the only thing he can do is grab him because he has the closest distance to the quarterback coming through the A gap. Six penalties now, 50 yards for South Carolina in the first half. Hand the football off here, something safe, and punt it. Doty with another holding penalty. Undoubtedly, it looked like another Georgia Bulldog got tackled. He tried to get it to Kevin Harris, did Luke Doty. They can't block him in definite pass situations. I mean, that's become obvious here. I think you decline this one, right? And make punt the football. Offense number 55. He'll lead us decline. Fourth down. Ja'Kai Moore called for the holding penalty. Yeah, it was an inside move that time by Walthor. And uh, so it's fourth and 24, and here's Kai Kroger. Pierre's Jackson back deep. 2.50 to go in the half. Georgia up 21 to 6. Number two in the country behind Alabama, which won a very tight game in Gainesville from the Gators today. 36 yard punt. Here's Matt Berry. All right, John, coming up with the Mercedes EQ halftime report. You mentioned that game, Alabama and Florida in the swamp will have highlights plus whiteout conditions for Auburn that they are handling well. Highlights of that one plus Clemson just had Georgia Tech first and goal. Tech had a chance to tie it. We'll tell you if they did. Coming up with the Mercedes EQ halftime report. I'm going to say no, based on the way Matt phrased that. Had a chance. But maybe they had a chance and 
succeeded. We'll find out. That's why they call it a tease. Lots of running room for James Cook. Weaves his way across midfield. Got tripped up by R.J. Roderick. Well, that's a 19-yard play. They've come up with offense and big chunks tonight. Nice vision that time by James Cook. That inside zone play can hit anywhere. I mean, it started going to the left side of the center. He saw it open up all the way to the right outside and turn it into a big run. It's just good vision. JT Daniels approaching two minutes, has two timeouts. Lots of time. Zamir White wrestled down Zemir by White. Damani Staley. The 43-yard line. Staley had a huge play last week yeah. for South Carolina. They were down 14 to nothing in the first half with a minute to go in the half. Their first 11 possessions last week on offense against the Pirates, eight punts and three turnovers. But Staley had a interception return for a touchdown, 63 yards with one minute to go in the half, made it 14 to seven East Carolina at the half and the Gamecocks momentum carried over in the second half. Nice cut by Cook. He's just inside the 40 yard line with a minute 17 to go in the half and the clock running. Georgia wanted to continue to improve their rushing game. They have not been dominant running the football the first two games. Of course, Clemson was an outstanding defense, only 121 yards, average under four yards a carry, 163 yards last week against UAB, but they got the big pass plays, running it pretty well here in the first half. Still yeah. good. <laughs> that did not work. Kenny McIntosh got flattened by Jabari Ellis. And the loss takes him back outside the 40, and probably out of field goal range. Very conservative possession there. You have timeouts, you got a lot of time, your quarterback has thrown the ball well, and you don't even throw the football. South Carolina going to take a timeout. Timeout, South Carolina. This is where Third Kirby has to make sure the punt protection is solid. This will be a 30 second timeout. Please Shane Beamer's point. team had two punt blocks in the opening game against Eastern Illinois. I bet they come after this one. Calling it Beamer Ball 2.0. Of course, Shane's dad, Frank, made his name as a great coach in large part because yep. of the Virginia Tech special teams, which Frank coached himself. Shane actively involved in their special teams with Pete Lembo, the special teams coordinator, head coach at Ball State, Elon, and Lehigh. There's the former South Carolina head coach, Will Muschamp, who now is on Kirby Smart's staff, and he's a defensive analyst has always also stepped in to coach the special yeah. teams. Yeah. A lot of the South Carolina players we talked to during the week said they were looking forward to seeing Coach Muschamp. Appreciate what he did for them. He's 28 and 30. He was 10 years head coach of the Gamecocks, fired during the season last year. Wow, Josh beautiful. Mann let it bounce, and beautiful execution by Coach Muschamp's special teams. A mere speed down there at the one-yard line to make the play. We'll take a look from the progressive pylon cam. This is perfect execution. Don't let those feet go in the end zone. The ball keep inside the one-yard line. That's just perfect. Just well done. Perfect kick, perfect coverage. Justin Robinson is the guy who had a, a penalty earlier in the game, made up for it on that play. They have uh, two number nines. And it was Amir Speed oh. who was down there to down it. And now South Carolina had a very tough time blocking this Georgia defense, has to make sure they get the ball out of yes. the end zone. With 32 seconds to go, play clock at one. Play action pass. Doty in trouble. And Barely it didn't look like out. he got out of the end zone from here. It's a safety. I think he got the ball out, but his knee may have been down before he reached the ball. I thought he got the ball, reached past the goal line. Jordan Davis. 
Trying With the first hit, Nolan Smith there as well. Stepping up in the pocket, nowhere to go. You see him reaching the ball. It has to get all the way out of the end zone before his knee or bottom hits. He's not down yet. He's down right there, and the ball's still in his belly, and it's not clearly not out of the end zone. That's a safety. Great look by the progressive pylon cam there. He did reach the ball out, but not until he was on the ground. Shane Beamer, careful what you wish for. He wanted to get the ball back against this salty Georgia defense, and they just yielded two points. Yep. Well, that's the danger of trying to do that. I mean, I think with so little time left against this defense, the chances that you're going to do something yeah. to help your cause is slim. Oh, and it's the big fella, Jordan Davis, that was there first. Doesn't get credit for the tackle, probably gets an assist, but it was his pressure that forced the play. It was really his mom who pushed him into football. He was a basketball player. And wound up playing football. We mentioned teammate of Eric Douglas, who's the center for South Carolina. And when Jordan Davis was asked at the SEC media days before the season, you know, who are you most looking forward to playing against this year? He said, it's only one guy, my buddy Eric Douglas. And that offensive line for South Carolina, not considered to be a strength of the team, has been overwhelmed at times tonight. I wonder if Eric Douglas had the same answer. No, Eric Douglas <laughs> would like to go back and play Eastern Illinois again. Beat them 46 zip in the season opener. Well, the Georgia defense, we talked about it coming in. They're a scary bunch. They're fast. They create havoc in the backfield. And they have been on point tonight again. The Georgia defense now has scored 14 points, uh, 16 points this season. They've given up nine. According to our Brian Taylor, crack statistician, in whom we have great faith. Kenny McIntosh. The free kick came from the 20. Now let's see what Georgia wants to do with the 42-yard line. Still 19 seconds to go. Kick off your NFL Week 2 Sunday, 10 a.m. The Countdown Crew on ESPN and the app. All access with Jameis Winston. We'll take you inside his off-season transformation. Then Sunday night baseball, an important game with the season down to two weeks remaining. Phillies and Mets trying to get in playoff position. Coverage starts at 6 p.m. with baseball tonight. Phillies two and a half out of the second wild card. Mets with a very slim chance now, six games back. You can take one shot here and see if you can get a chunk play. They get it to Powers. He's across midfield and wrestled down at the 46. And Kirby Smart will use a timeout. Getting that one timeout back from the officials was big. Yep. One timeout left. Georgia. Well, we talked to Kirby Smart. Yesterday, we asked him about what Shane Beamer said, that this might be the best Georgia defense ever. They've had a lot of good defenses here over the years, particularly lately under Coach Smart. He wasn't ready to go there yet, but he said he thinks they have a chance to be great if they can play well on the back end. Yeah. And I think we both like to play in the back end because there's so much right. pressure up right. front, you, you right. really don't get tested that often. Yeah, I mean, they play man, they play zone, but the pressure and the havoc that's created by that front seven does make it easier to play in the back. And he did say to us, he thinks up front, they may be as good a group as he's had. And he's very comfortable saying that about the front. And they've been that tonight. They, they have not even had to blitz as much as they did against Clemson. It's, it's been their front four that has really controlled the football game in very dominant fashion. 16 dropbacks and 10 pressures on the South Carolina quarterbacks. James Cook, the running back. JT Daniels steps into the throw, wide open receiver. Jermaine Burton had to go down to a knee to catch it. Now they're going to spike it. And they have the one timeout left. Burton might have been able to get more if that ball had hit him in stride. They can take one more throw here. They've got nine seconds. 
They've got the one timeout. So eight seconds now. They can they can throw one more to the sideline, and they've got that timeout to call as soon as the ball is caught if it doesn't get out of bounds. That was the beauty of saving that timeout when they had the first down throw because the clock stops while they move the chains and they were able to spike it and only lose two seconds. Look for something on the outside. South Carolina smartly bringing their coverage up to take away that quick out route. They are in field goal range for Jack Podlesny. He's been a little shaky here at the start of the year. Here is Jackson with five seconds to go down just shy of the first down, but that really won't matter. They're going to send the field goal unit out Third now. Final time out of the half. This will be a 30 second timeout. Todd Lesney, great last year, 13 out of 16. He hit the game winning 53 yarder in their bowl game win against Cincinnati with three seconds to go, but this year just one for three. Has missed one in each game after he made a chip shot in the win to start the year against Clemson. And this is as much a confidence building moment for him that Kirby Smart's giving him here. Put points on the board right before the end of the first half. Really well executed by JT Daniels. That two minute drive had the two timeouts. He's now 17 to 21, 245 and two touchdowns in the first half. Very, very efficient. Made good decisions the whole first half. And a chance if they make the field goal for five points that Georgia didn't expect to That's get. Right. That's right. In the waning moments of this first half. South Carolina is going to get the ball to, to start the second half. 36 yard try for Pod Lesney. Junior from St. Simons Island, Georgia. That's more like it. Strong and true. And it takes us to halftime. So Georgia's defense has outscored its opponents through two and a half games this season. They had 332 yards of offense in that half. Here's Molly. Coach, your defense has scored 16 points. They've only allowed nine this season. How have they been able to be so effective? Well, we haven't been real effective on third down. South Carolina's doing a good job moving the pocket. We can't get out the field on third down, and we've given up some explosives, so we got to do a better job there. What does having JT Daniels back do for your offense? Well, he's playing with a lot of confidence right now. He knows what he's doing. He knows where he wants to go with the ball. He's doing a great job managing the offense. All right, thank you, Coach. Thank you. <laughs> He's the coach. Yeah, and he coached for Saban, right? <laughs> yes, he Sounds did. very similar. The apple did not fall far from that tree. We'll send you to the studio for the Mercedes EQ halftime report right now. Matt? Sean McDonough, thank you. You're watching College Football presented by Subway. And this is the SEC on ESPN. Sold out Sanford Stadium between the hedges in Athens, Georgia at the half. The number two team in the country leading. 26 to 6 over South Carolina. Welcome back, Sean McDonough, along with Todd Blackledge. Delighted to have you with us. Pretty much what we expected. Yeah. Georgia again suffocating on defense. Suffocating on defense. And then the good news for Georgia fans is their offense with JT Daniels back running the show, a quarterback. Very good, very explosive in that first half. Average almost nine yards of play of offense. So the combination and then the special teams at the end, uh, really a complete performance by the Bulldogs. South Carolina, you need to find a way to block that defensive front seven. The kickoff from Camarda is a touchback. Here's tonight's fighting spirit moment brought to you by Modelo. Well, it's the linebacking play of Georgia. We talked about how fast they are. This is N'Kobe Dean. Doesn't matter which guy's in the game. All three of these inside linebackers can flat out fly. The line controls the line of scrimmage frees up the linebackers to make plays. That's Quay Walker. And here's the fastest of them all, Channing Tindall, chasing a play down from the backside. I mean, it's just nowhere to run, nowhere to hide against this Georgia defense. Well, it's still Luke Doty at quarterback. He came off the bench when Zeb Nolan, the starter, had his hand stepped on. 
Doty runs for a few. Here's Molly. Well, Shane Beamer told me that Zeb Nolan has a cut on his right hand. He has no feeling in his right hand, so he can't grip a football. But he is available, but doubtful to return, mostly because Luke Doty is doing such a good job. He said, we're doing good things on offense, but dumb penalties are killing us. And he said they will continue to attack their secondary, and they'll lean on Josh Van and their wide receivers to make big plays, Sean. The two long passes that combined for 92 yards. They had 39 yards on all of their other plays, 26 total. Doty had to throw it away. And Tremon Walker and Quay Walker coming after him. Here's the first half stats brought to you by PlayStation. Total dominance by Georgia. Yeah, coming into the game. South Carolina only allowing 8% conversions on third down. Georgia very efficient in that first half. And here's a third down, the first third down play of the second half for South Carolina. Again, Georgia has not had to blitz on third down because their front four has been so effective. The screen, and it's off the hands of Harris and intercepted. Picked off by Darion Kendrick, the transfer from Clemson. A little bit hard, a little bit behind the receiver, but still catchable. And normally when that ball bounces up in the air in the middle of the field like that, bad things happen. And Georgia records their fifth interception of the season as well. Darion Kendrick, the transfer from Clemson. He's a two-year starter there, began his career at Clemson as a wide receiver. A nice addition to this secondary that lost so many guys to the draft. And he gets the Don the Savage pass. He returned it to the 20. Harris made the tackle. And the end of the first half and the beginning of the third quarter couldn't have gone any worse for Shane Beamer's team. Zemir White, first and goal, Georgia. As he ripped it down inside the five-yard line, they're going to mark it back on the five, and the dogs are going to line up quickly. Really nice block by Warren McClendon, the right tackle on that play. Same play. Untouched, basically. Zemir White, touchdown, Georgia. Same play again, inside zone. They went with tempo. Zamir White this time broke it back to the left side of the center. The play before, it was to the right side. Wow. Dating back to the end of the first half, that's 12 points in the span of a minute and 43 seconds now for the Dogs. Jack Podlesny adds the extra point. You run a zone play, I mean, it can it can hit anywhere in here, anywhere along the line, as long as the back just has to have vision. The play before, he broke it to the right. This one to the left of the center. Good blocking up front. And Zamir White gets it into the end zone. This is right at the end of the half, the safety, trying to make a play under a minute. Goes to an interception on the first possession, a third down play, a tip ball. And Georgia, like a championship caliber team is supposed to do, capitalizes on your mistakes. There was also a field goal in between yeah. after the safety in the final seconds of the first half. Shane Beamer's Gamecocks came here 2 0 for the first time since 2017. Really getting manhandled when they're on offense by this stout, fast, physical Georgia defense. And Coach Beamer knew what he was in for on that side of the ball. Big Camarda kicks off. Another touchback. An extra yard for Teachers Week is an annual effort led by the College Football Playoff Foundation. It brings college sports together to support and honor great teachers across the country at games and on social media. To learn more about Extra Yard for Teachers, follow 
at CFP extra yard. Zeb Dolan, the starting quarterback tonight for South Carolina, talked to us the other day about a teacher he had he was particularly fond of, his dad. Phys ed teacher at Oconee County High School, just down the street from here in Watkinsville, Georgia. What a job he's done as the football coach here in his eighth season. He built them into a power. Travis Nolan played quarterback at Appalachian State. Luke Doty's pass is incomplete. There's Oconee County High School. He's got a pretty good quarterback coach, too, doesn't he? He has Brad Johnson as his quarterback coach. Travis is the head coach. They had a big win, as we mentioned earlier, against Thomasville, 20 to 6. But Brad Johnson, of course, was a Super Bowl winning quarterback for Coach John Gruden and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, is the quarterback coach. Yeah. Oh. Their sons, they have two sons, one each, starting quarterbacks in the SEC. Zeb Nolan, starting for South Carolina. That's Kevin Harris up the middle. And Brad Johnson's son, Max, is the starting quarterback at LSU. They have two of the 14 <laughs> starting quarterbacks in the SEC as their offspring. Brad Johnson has another son, Jake, heading to LSU as a very highly recruited tight end. More manageable third down situation right now for Luke Doty. He just cannot hold the football very long. Movement again. Ball start. Offense number 54. Five yard penalty. Just, it remains third down. Just so crucial. It's third and three. You got a lot of options on third and three. You got a mobile quarterback. Now you're third and eight, and you've already found out that you have a very difficult time blocking these guys for very long on third down. Check down on third and eight, and Kevin Harris did not get the first down. It's close, though. Well, isn't he? he might have gotten yeah. it. Didn't look like from here that he did. No, he did. Yeah. First down. We nice. think they still haven't moved the chain. Nice effort by Harris to keep his feet in. Well, he's out way back. Yeah. They gave him a very favorable spot. He stepped out about two yards short of the 35 yard line. But it'll stand. It's a first down. They'll take it. They need all the help they can get. That's for sure. And Harris gets a couple. I still think the guy that has not touched the ball for South Carolina, I mean, I know that Josh Mann is their deep threat, but Jaheim Bell, number zero, he's a matchup problem. He's a big athletic tight end, has not had a ball thrown his way. I think they got to find a way to get him the football. See if he can make a play in the middle of the field or out in space. Marcus Satterfield, the coordinator, talking about his freakish athletic skills. Chance to be very special, said the offensive coordinator, Kevin Harris, up the middle. He saw his versatility right there. That time he lined up as a fullback. He was a lead blocking fullback on that play. Tempo now for the Gamecocks. And Harris carries for another first down. So sustained movement here on the offensive side for the coordinator, Marcus Satterfield. And he was not pleased to say the least with their performance last week against East Carolina. He said, my wife's even mad at me. We were yeah. so bad offensively. Wife Sarah, not a big fan of that performance last week in Greenville. Juju McDowell comes in at running back now. He's a freshman. Stays in the block and it doesn't help. Doty got knocked free from the football. Nolan Smith hit him and it got picked up by Quay Walker. That pressure leads to a turnover. 
Jazz to turn a tie in the left tackle gets beat by the speed rush. It's just a speed edge rush on the left side of the screen. Doty not able to find it. Ball comes out. The one thing that Georgia had not done yet this year was force a fumble. There's their first one. Football belongs to the Bulldogs. Join us for Monday Night Football on ESPN 8 o'clock. The Lions and the Packers, each team went down to defeat in week one. Packers shockingly so, they got routed by New Orleans. And over on ESPN 2, Peyton and Eli Manning breaking down the game from their unique perspective, from the comforts of their respective basements. Their broadcast has X and O analysis, stories, and special guests. And the pass right through the hands of Bowers, who might have been anticipating some contact from the defense. Well, we mentioned, speaking of the Mannings, Peyton and Eli's nephew, Arch, is here tonight, <laughs> one of the top quarterback recruits in the country, the son of Cooper and his wife, Ellen. And the student section knew yeah. Arch was coming. We want Arch. I wonder if the student section knows he's just a junior, <laughs> that he has another year of high school after this. Yeah, he does look very young, yeah. doesn't he? Very athletic, though. Not surprisingly so. His grandfather, the great Archie Manning. Speaking of the Mannings on the Monday night, I, I thoroughly enjoyed listening to those two guys. I mean, Peyton and Eli are just great guys to begin with. Very knowledgeable, of course, but funny, self-deprecating. Cooper's the funniest of all of them. Yes. If you ever spend time with him, he is the funniest. But Peyton and, and Eli both were, were outstanding. And, the guests they had on really added something to uh, to their conversations. It's pretty cool. But Cooper's Ole Miss, obviously Eli's Ole Miss, Peyton's Tennessee. And Cooper looks very comfortable in that <laughs> Georgia hat. Good throw by JT Daniels and the catch by Jermaine Burton. Daniels has been very sharp. I mean, he has not looked flustered at all. He's had a good, clean pocket. He's been very decisive where he wants to go with the football. And I like his touch. He has the ability to throw balls over linebackers, into crossing routes. I just think he has excellent timing and touch when he throws a football. National High School Player of the Year. Designated by Gatorade coming out of modern day in Southern California. On target again there. It's a nice run after the catch by Marcus Rosemi Jack Saint. Broke his leg while scoring a touchdown last year against Florida. I would have, I think Peyton and Eli are going to talk about Cooper in that Georgia hat. You think? I, I do think so. Because they never miss a chance to jab each other. Yeah. Well, Kendall Milton, the ball carrier, got hit hard by Jalen Foster. That Georgia hat looks better on Cooper's head than the Ravens helmet looked on Peyton's head. It wasn't big enough, head. as Eli no. pointed out on no, the show. Near. That hat fits. I mean, that it's a good looking hat. Milton trying to get outside. And not only really the first family of football in the United States, you have to think. Right. <laughs> yeah, I don't know who you're going to put up against them. But just as nice, I mean, they're just so thoroughly nice and thoughtful yeah. and friendly Offside. and smart Defense and decent. Number seven. Well, that the comes from Archie and Olivia. They're, 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 they're two of the they're all time great people that, that are around. Well, one thing that is interesting, Georgia does have a freshman here, Brock Vandegrift out of Bogart, Georgia, who was a five-star yep. recruit. He's waiting behind Daniels and Bennett and Carson Beck. I watched him in practice. He was running the scout team offense. He's a big physical kid, a dual-threat guy. It's Zamir White. There's Vandegrift. a little bit older than a freshman He doesn't quarterback really does. look a lot like Arch. <laughs> <laughs> a little different grooming than the uh, the Manning family, but it works to each his own. Yeah. I think hair of any kind uh, should be admired. <laughs> and no matter where Arch decides to go, the likelihood is there's pretty good quarterbacks right. there already. Right. Red, you know, Ole Miss, obviously, Alabama. I don't want to these teams out because now their fans will get all upset. You didn't mention us. Texas. 
They got a lot of people interested in them. I think the, what we heard, they're keeping all options open are the Mannings. Pass into the end zone, broken up nicely by Daryl Ware. Yeah, that, that's a play probably, even though he's not the most mobile, JT Daniels needs to run this. I mean, that's a hard throw back across his body to a covered guy. Just try to run it and get to the pylon. You probably score. That's a hard throw, kind of a dangerous throw, and it was a smarter decision would have been to run that one and try to get to the front pylon. It was third down and goal from the four. James Cook back in at running back. I watch him just swinging out of the backfield here. Johnson went in motion to the left, and there is Cook out of the backfield for his second touchdown of the night. One rushing, and now one receiving. Really good timing on the little bunch route. You had receiver and tight end going inside. Cook is breaking outside and just too easy. My guess is that Cooper and Ellen will applaud as politely at every school at Absolutely. which they're hosted yeah. on yeah. Arch's other Absolutely. recruiting visits. Because everybody is after him. Mm -hmm. so. And they're, as we said, unfailingly thoughtful and polite. So so he'll have a nice hat collection at home at the end of this tour, mm -hmm. is what you're saying. Yes, he will. 40 to 6, Georgia. They're putting on a nice show for the Mannings here tonight. ESPN College Football Primetime, presented by Subway, is brought to you by American Express. See all that you can expect when you're with Amex. Well, what a busy day for our friend and colleague David Pollock. Honored to hear before the game for his induction of the College Football Hall of Fame Class of 2020. They haven't had the ceremony yet because of COVID. They're going to have it in December in Las Vegas. What a great player David was here. You saw him get on the plane. He was on game day this morning, yeah. obviously, in State College, Pennsylvania. That Flew here in time to be recognized on the field. That must have been the true big dog airlines right there. I mean, it was a Georgia plane that brought him down here. Fortunately, he's let himself. He's in much better shape now than when he played. Yeah. He and Herschel Walker, the only three-time first-team All-Americans in Georgia history, was the SEC Defensive Player of the Year in 2004. The kickoff is a touchback, and you and Vern Lundquist were on the call for CBS when David Pollock made a memorable play in this rivalry. Here's the sprint right. Jenkins pulls up. He's in trouble. That and it's intercepted. My goodness. David Pollock. It was stole the ball. Yeah, he's only thinking deflection, just trying to knock the pass down. But on the way down, he says, wait a minute. I can catch this ball. Yeah, that's one of those plays I'll never forget. It was as, as fine of an individual play as I've ever seen. And I did a bunch of David's games. I mean, those years with Vern, we did a bunch of George's games. He and David Green was the quarterback. They were best friends from the same hometown. And he was a great, great player. It's unfortunate that his NFL career got cut short with his injury. I think he would have been a good pro too. Yeah, it was 15 years ago. He suffered the serious neck injury. Still the all-time sack leader here and leader in career tackles for a loss, 58 and a half. He'll take his rightful place in the College Football Hall of Fame December 7th in Las Vegas. They will induct both the 2020 and 2021 classes. This is worth a second look. We've yeah. both seen a lot of football. I don't think I've ever seen that. No. You know, and, and I brought his name up in our game last week when we had Michigan, and we were talking about Aiden Hutchison, their outstanding edge rusher. The thing I loved about David Pollock as a player is he had a motor. He did not ever take a play off. I mean, he played every play hard, the same way like T.J. Watt plays every play hard, the way, you know, Aiden Hutchison now at Michigan. Every play, you have to account for him. As you saw, that was the only touchdown of that game. Look out, Doty, uh, taken down, but they grabbed his face mask. Quay Walker all set for another Georgia sack, but he inadvertently grabbed Luke Doty by the headgear. I, I don't understand. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. I don't understand the pass protection communication. What? 
I mean, here's the penalty, the face mask, okay? So they get, they get a break. But this is an untouched guy, and he's going to come right in this hole. Watch number 54, Javon Gwynn. I mean, he just runs by him and puts a hand on him. That's not going to stop anybody. And it's not like they're overload blitzing. Again, that's four people rushing against five blockers, and they are getting home anytime they want. Greg Atkins is their offensive line coach. He's new to the staff. Shane Beamer kept only one coach from Will Muschamp's staff, and that was Mike Peterson on the defensive side. He's a longtime offensive line coach, very highly regarded. Long throw too far in front of Jalen Brooks, and it'll be second and ten. Well, guys, Quay Walker with that face mask penalty, he was already hearing it from his defense on the sideline. They're giving him a hard time for not returning that fumble for a touchdown. His D-line coach, Cray Scott, ran over and said, I can outrun you. I'm an old man. This defense is hungry for more points. David Pollock would be really proud of that kind of attitude. David Pollock was kind of pudgy when he played, obviously. Yeah, he, yeah, he was thick. He was, 305. Yeah, he was a 300-pounder. And now, all, yeah, every time you see him, even like walking down a hallway, he's doing yeah. burpees. And <laughs> Big basketball player, loves to play basketball. Very careful about his diet. Doty run down from behind by Channing Tyndall, the Columbia, South Carolina native. Well, we were talking about this at halftime. I mean, if there is a better defensive football team in the country, we, we need to see it because this group from front to back is as advertised. And they're deep. They play a lot of guys. And you're right. I mean, when you pressure with a front seven like this and a front four, you can cover up some mistakes or some inexperience or some youth in the back end of your defense. Third down and 10. Doty hit again as he threw, got it off to Jalen Brooks. But he's tackled well short of the first down. Robert Beal brought the pressure. Lewis Seen made the tackle. It's just guy after guy. I mean, in that case, we had Adam Anderson, 19, getting a hit on the quarterback, a free run. I like seeing this though, Nolan, you know, really trying to build that relationship. Had a great relationship with Trey Lance when they were together at North Dakota State when he was backing up Trey Lance. He, he said he's his best friend, Trey yep. Lance. They talk just about every day. Ty Kroger's punt will be downed at the 16 yard line. 44 yard punt. Congratulations again to David Pollock on the field for the game with his parents tonight. That is not Arch Manning. That's a Georgia fan who wants Arch Manning, the junior from New Orleans, to come here to Georgia and play quarterback. There's Arch back in his seat, right of your picture. Made his junior season debut last night for Isidore Newman High School. They won 28 nothing over Vanderbilt Catholic. He went 19 for 34 for three touchdowns. He also ran for 50. Kenny McIntosh, the ball carrier. He has been quoted as saying that he plans to visit Georgia, Alabama, Texas, Ole Miss, and Clemson at some point this year. Yeah, and these are these are all, you know, the difference between an official visit, which you can't take as a junior, and an unofficial visit means you pay for your own travel. Once you're on campus, they can show you around, talk to you, visit with you, and everything like that. But these are unofficial visits right now that he's making to these places. And interested to know if he will visit LSU as well, his home state. Kendall Milton carries for a first down and much more out of bounds at the 34-yard line. 22-yard run for Milton, sophomore from Fresno, California, on the all-freshman team in the SEC a year ago. You know, when we talked to Todd Monk, and he said, offensively, the least of our worries is the running back position. We feel like we have good depth there. We can rotate a lot of guys. We got a couple downhill runners. We got a couple guys that are better in space and out of the backfield. And we're seeing a little bit of all of them. Well, he's a fun guy to talk to, Todd Munkin. Kenny McIntosh 
Out near midfield, and I would think Coach Munkin, Kirby Smart have to be pleased with yep. this offensive performance tonight against the defense they have a lot of respect for. Yep, they they did. They knew that it was a, a talented front seven. They had not run the football particularly well the first two games. They're running it well tonight. 146 yards, 439 total yards. So it's the combination run pass, the decision making and accuracy of JT Daniels. And again, you think, what is this Georgia team going to look like in a few weeks if they get George Pickens back, if they get Blaylock back. If they get Kiaris Jackson 100%, Darnell Washington. I mean, this potentially is a uh, Offense number really 54. interesting team. Five yard pivot. First down. Pickens, Blaylock, Washington. Not dressed tonight. Blaylock closer than Pickens, we believe, to returning, but they hope to have all of them back this year. Well, it has been good seeing Kiaris Jackson. I mean, he's been returning punts, but these are the first offensive snaps. He's gotten in the game tonight. A couple catches. Daniels throws it up for grabs, and it's intercepted if Jalen Foster is in bounds, and he is. Yeah. This was a late throw by JT Daniels. He moved up in the pocket. He kind of double clutched, and he threw this ball late. Probably the worst decision he's made today, trying to get to his tight end, Fitzpatrick, on the sideline. Ball just hung in the air. And Jalen Foster made a great play on the ball. His second interception really played the ball well on that play on the sideline. His second interception of the season, he had one in their opener against Eastern Illinois. Second interception for them tonight. They have six in three games now. They came into tonight fifth in the nation through the first couple of weeks in interceptions with those four they brought here to Athens with Luke Doty at quarterback from Myrtle Beach South Carolina grew up a Clemson fan he made the decision to come to Clemson's arch rival South Carolina he got it to Jaheim Bell for a couple he said when I came to visit South Carolina I just fell in love with him For Myrtle Beach, but not a golfer. He said he's a very good putt-putt golfer, but not much of a real golfer. Yeah. There's a lot of those, a lot of, a lot of putt-putt courses right around Myrtle Beach. If you've ever and a lot of real golf courses summer. too. Yeah. Great destination for golf trips. I could probably beat you in putt-putt. I don't think. Well, I know you can't beat me in the real thing. <laughs> so the 32-yard line. That's why I said that. Kevin Harris on the carry and Lewis Seen made the tackle. But your your golf game is coming along. You've got back into it in the yes. last year or so. It's coming along. The truck is. They're not in agreement with the statement I just made. But we do think you hosted us at an NFL alumni tournament at yes. the fabulous Firestone there. I would say that late April is probably not the best time to play golf <laughs> in Northeast Ohio. We're still a little cold and damp, but we had one out of three days. It was nice. Another month time or two, out. we should plow out, be good, dry out. First time out this half. Time out called with 51 seconds to go. Well, obviously, Shane Beamer didn't expect to step in at South Carolina and instantly be a contender. I mean, they were two and eight last year, so it's going to take a while, but. Yeah. He is clearly doing everything he can. You know, I think he's spoken to every person in the state of South Carolina already, yes. trying to drum up uh, even more enthusiasm yeah. for that great fan base. Yeah, and you know, it was interesting. I mean, obviously, he, he and Kirby are friends. They were on the staff together here, and he credits Kirby for helping him become a better coach. But when we talked to Kirby yesterday, he said, you know, this is a different South Carolina team than than what we saw last year. Last year when they played, they were in the midst of a losing streak. They were getting ready to fire Kirby's friend, Will Muschamp. They had guys who were opting out. They had COVID issues, and they were not very competitive. And, and to watch them play the first couple games this year, flying around and playing with confidence. And, but Georgia is just that much further along as a program in South Carolina right now. This is, this is a team that Kirby has been building for. You know, they've... They've really been good in, the, in his time here. They lost five games his first year when he was playing with you know, Mark Rick's recruits, basically. 
He has been one of the best recruiters in college football. And so on the front end of recruiting, on the back end of putting him in the NFL, he's on par with all the top programs in college football. The only thing he hasn't done is win a national championship and only one SEC championship or find a way to beat Alabama in his league. Kroger punts. They'll go out of bounds. Don't you think that's because the offense is lagged behind? I mean, the other yeah. competitive teams to be in the college football playoff, Alabama, Clemson, Ohio State, Oklahoma, all those teams have been better over these last five years than Georgia on offense. Yeah, for the most part. I do think Jake Fromm had a couple good years in there playing, you know, as the starting quarterback, won a lot of football games. But it has been more defense than offense. But I think that... You know, the addition of Todd Munkin, and now if JT Daniels can stay healthy, I think they might have the offense to kind of go with this defense. You know, the point should be made. We're in the final minute of the third quarter. This is year two for Todd Munkin. Yep. But last year he arrived, and COVID arrived, and, you know, there's no spring practice. There's limited summer practice. You can't meet with the players. Very hard to put in a new offense under those circumstances. And he said it's night and day here in year two with the players understanding. Uh, Todd's still a little fired up, even with a 34-point lead. Very animated, very animated coach in practice. Came has NFL background and college background. And, uh, and family background. Yeah. Just, Cousin is Jeff, the head coach at Army. They're from a coaching family. What did he tell us? He said his dad, Todd told us this, my dad and four of his brothers are all in the Illinois High School Coaches yes. Hall of Fame. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty impressive. <laughs> that takes us to the end of the third quarter. George outscored Carolina in that quarter. It's 14 to nothing. And it's 40 to 6 for the number two team in the country as we head to the fourth in Athens. This is the SEC on ESPN. talking Todd about how well Georgia has recruited this scene is one of the reasons why yeah. it's a great atmosphere here at Sanford Stadium Kendall Milton, Milton call or carries for the first down yeah this is one of the great places to come to a game I mean I love when stadiums are located in the center of campus you know it's kind of right in the hub of everything that goes on it's a beautiful campus nice downtown and uh, Obviously a passionate fan base that stretches all the way across a very good football playing state. And recruiting at Georgia, there are so many really good football players in state to start with. Kendall Milton, the ball carrier again. But don't you think if you're going to be one of those teams, you just showed the graphic, that's going to compete to be in the college football playoff, you have to recruit nationally. Oh, you do. And even absolutely. though there's great talent no, absolutely around here. You do. I mean, they went to California yep. for Milton and for Brock Bowers, and they hope to go to Louisiana for that young yep. man, Arch Manning. But, you know, no, you the, the best teams to. are getting players from all over the country. Yep. You definitely have to. Second and five. JT Daniels on the run. It's dropped by Marcus Roseme Jack Saint. You know, I mean, Kirby has recruited exceptionally well because, as we mentioned, he was with Nick Saban, and Nick Saban has been the best recruiter in college football. And he has modeled, Kirby has so much of the program at, on what they did at Alabama, what he was a part of, what he was very instrumental in building with Nick. And, uh, you know, it, it's a proven formula. It's a proven process that works, starting with recruiting, then with developing of players and, and reloading. Kenny McIntosh has the first down. First Kirby played here. Fine defensive back, all SEC, his last year for the Hall of Fame coach, Jim Donnan. Who, by the way, I think was a forerunner to Peyton and Eli. Uh, coach Donnan 
does a watch along. I believe it's on YouTube oh, yeah. where you can watch the Georgia game huh? along with him, and he'll provide commentary. He worked with us for a while. Yeah, did a great he job at ESPN. In that. Yeah. Jim's a terrific man. Still lives here in Athens. All the former coaches come back here to Athens. Why wouldn't you? Beautiful town. Milton, the ball's out of the end. No whistle. Apparently not down, at least not for the moment. Is that the ruling? And the Gamecocks say they have the ball. O'Donnell Fortune picked it up. Looked from our vantage point like the runner was down. Milton still has it there. Yeah, well. the knee's down, I yeah. think, before the ball can comes out it's coming out but knee on the ground yeah, there he's on the ground is, yep. yeah I think he's I think this is likely to be overturned RJ Roderick ripped it out we'll tell you what they decided when we come back ESPN college football primetime is presented by the Eat Fresh Refresh at Subway. This Ugga, one of the great mascots in college athletics. Ugga has a pretty good air-conditioned dog house right next to the cheerleaders platform. That's Ugga 10. Tradition that dates back to the... See that bag of ice right over here by 1950s. the house? Yes. There's times when it's really hot. You know, this is a night game. They'll put that ice right in there, and Ugga will just lay on the ice. I mean, just you talk about cooling yourself. That's the way to do it. It's good to be Ugga. Yeah. Although we did the Sugar Bowl a couple of years ago when Ugga got on the wrong <laughs> side of right. Bevo, and there was almost right. Ugga 11. <laughs> that is right. Kevin Harris bouncing off some hits. There's the air conditioning. You got the ice, and yeah. uh, just in case the air conditioning isn't doing enough. And Third down and two here for South Carolina. It manages two field goals. Georgia has still not given up a touchdown while on defense this season. Through two full games and three quarters plus of this one. Clemson kicked the field goal. UAB scored a defensive touchdown. And Carolina has two field goals tonight. Harris got the first down. Here's Matt Berry. All right, Sean, checking in on Penn State and Auburn. Tyler Warren here, 14-3 Penn State at this point. A little separation to make it 21-10. But ensuing possession, here comes Auburn. They leaned heavily on the running game. And Tank Bigsby would punch it in for Auburn. So right now, Penn State has the ball still with the lead. After this game, Rashad White, Arizona State, on the road, taking on BYU and another White out. We'll have that coming up after kick. All right, thank you. So you have your alma mater going on right now. And I'm sure everybody's watching this game. Very few are probably watching that game. And then Matt Berry, distinguished alum of Arizona State. Okay. We'll be watching his Sun Devils closely. That's a big game. Matt Perry is also working on his golf game, I'm sure, because he will be participating in our Celebrity Golf Classic okay. at Boston Golf Club on Monday afternoon. A dazzling array of celebrities. Last year, Matt's group asked me why they didn't get a celebrity, which I thought was a little <laughs> unfortunate to me. Long throw! It's right. caught for a Whoa. touchdown. Josh Van made the catch. Boy. He's impressive. There, he's impressive. Yeah, he's There's impressive. the promise of good things to come. Working on a mere speed, one on one, and he just has the ability to separate. Gets off the line clean, and then separates to the football. Mere speed, a little bit late finding the ball, and a beautiful throw by Luke Doty. Out Three catches front. for 128 and a touchdown for Van. Back to back games now over 100 yards, right? Yes. And by the way, Matt Barry's group loved him. Loved him. You know what's coming up next? You, know, you can see Ugga with the tongue hanging out. Ugga's a little hungry. Ugga was telling our crew down there, where's Taste of the Town? Right. Ugga's still awake just for Taste of the Stayed Town. Stayed up just for that. Which will be coming shortly, as we say in the 
Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Offside, defense, movement by the defense caused the offense to react. Half the distance to the goal, replay and try. And, you know, we mentioned a lot of people in that competitive game, Penn State Army, are watching that, but this thing has, has reasons why some may stick with us. And the extra point is good by Parker White. All right, you've waited long enough. We're going to reward your patience. Todd's Taste of the Town from Cafe Racer in Crawford, Georgia, when we come back. Oglethorpe County at a place called the Cafe Racer. Amazing biscuit breakfast sandwiches. I have three of them here. This is the all the way, the original. This is the BB King, and the one I really locked in on is called the Bongiorno. It's jalapeno cream cheese, a fried tater tot patty, thick cut bacon, a fried egg over medium, lettuce, tomato, house-made pimento cheese, and then a crusted cheese top, also the homemade racer sauce. Taste of the town. Welcome home. Is, is, did you bring Uga some food, Cafe Racer? You know what, though? At Cafe Racer, they have a little cup with chopped up pieces of bacon to, to give dogs that come. There's a lot of dogs that you can people bring, your bring dog. their dogs. People bring their dogs to uh, Cafe Racer. There's nowhere to sit in the restaurant. You either sit in the in your car or on lawn chairs, whatever. It's a very cool place that Chris Hart and his wife Gabby have going. Opened in 2018. Kickoff return brought back to the 16 yard line. You're trying really hard with that outfit. What was with the outfit? It's my work shirt. That's <laughs> my taste of the town work shirt. And I had to work. I mean, the breakfast sandwiches and also the donuts. And I, I said I was going to bring some donuts for you Touchdown. and Molly. I'm trying so, to suck uh, in the gut as we speak. Wait, 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 there's like nine different choices. They're here. all good. They're all good. This it, one looks good. So Chris, he, he makes them with potato flour. He kind of found that flavor and that taste in Portland, Maine. Wanted to bring it back to this part of the country, and they are for yeah. real. They're Portland, spectacular. Maine's known for their potato flour donuts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's in the racer sauce? Uh, it's kind of a secret recipe, uh, kind of a Rico Ramalad sauce. It's uh, kind of spicy, you know, but the sandwiches are really fantastic. And, you know, the biscuits are homemade. Well, the, if, the, if, the, if their sandwiches are fantastic, where's the, where's the sandwiches? Well, I ate those. I just it brought seems you like bad form to eat on TV. Yeah. Well. But I am. I'm going to because it would be rude. Yeah. Where does the name Cafe Racer come from? Do we know? Yeah, so they have those dogs race yeah. while they're there. No, so Chris Hart, the owner, in addition to being a barista, in addition to being a bartender before he opened this place, also worked at a motorcycle shop. And the Cafe Racer is a vintage kind of race motorcycle back in the day. So their logo on the building, their logo on the building is so which one is this? I don't know. I mean, I don't know what the flavors are. I mean, they I just... Thought we were, I thought we were doing intermittent fasting. Yeah, why? Well, Apparently I, that no, involves Saturdays, eating at Game days I take off. Saturdays I are my cheat day for intermittent fasting. It's delicious. I just eat whenever and whatever on Saturday. Glad you like. I'll go with you next week. Okay. Since you didn't bring any, you didn't bring any sandwiches back. Stetson Bennett back in. Matt quarterback, he made a brief appearance in the first half after JT Daniels led him on two touchdown drives. Bennett for an interception. Has not returned until right now. He throws one up for grabs. A little hand fighting intended for Justin Robinson. And it's incomplete. Well, hung in the air. Both guys had a shot at it. Neither one able to come down with it. Uh, that's one of those plays you give your receiver a chance to go up and make a play. Typically, offensive guys are a little bit better at going after a, a jump ball than a defensive guy. But Robinson not able to come down with the catch. I have a dilemma now. I, I want to finish this donut because it really is really, really good. Yeah. Shout out to Portland, Maine for their major contribution. Great New England state. But that uh, would be, I can't do it. Save it for 
next time. Kendall Milton got banged by Damani Staley. Big, big hit. Lots of solid physical football on both sides tonight. You know what I like about that play and that hit? You can see Shane Beamer applauding Staley. No quit in this South Carolina team. Clearly outplayed, clearly outmanned. But here with 8.51 on a third down play, great effort, great physicality. They can build on that. You know, South Carolina and Shane Beamer can build on that. Jake Camarda, terrific punter. And a whistle before he punts on fourth and two. By the way, his career punting average is 45.4. Entering tonight, the all-time record. All start, offense number 17, five-yard penalty. It remains fourth down. Jake's is 45.5 entering tonight. The career record at Georgia is 45.4. Wow. From the great Drew Butler, Ray Guy Award winner back in 2009. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Camarda has a chance to leave as the all-time leader in Georgia history and career punt average. Because Drew Butler's dad, Kevin Butler, the only uh, place kicker in the College Football Hall of Fame. He kicked here at Georgia as an All-American. Kicked a 60-yard field goal. That's still the school record. Josh Van, a fair catch. Time to eat the donuts as we go to a break with 8.17 to go. Oh, here's a look inside. Sometimes you don't want to know, but so far, this looks okay. Here's a look at this week's college football rankings brought to you by Chick-fil-A and Todd. As we look at them, my question would be, Alabama barely won at Florida today. Yeah. Georgia, very impressive in going to 3-0. and I think they are the best defensive team in the country. Yeah, Alabama, I would agree with me, that. would be better on offense at this juncture. Uh, any uh, thought about Georgia? Vaulting up to number one, or do you have to knock off the champion that they hold the title from the year? In my opinion, yes. I mean, until somebody dethrones them, they they should still be number one. I mean, that was a game in the swamp. You know, Georgia's playing at home. Florida played them really good in the SEC championship game last year. And so uh, and it was a great comeback by Florida in that game. But, yeah, I think Alabama's number one. Georgia is a very strong number two. Midway. <laughs> Why do you think that's <laughs> funny? No, I don't think it's funny. I, I agree with your point. Muse made the catch. Nick Muse, the tight end. Coaches said they need to get him more touches, and he hasn't really been that actively involved here tonight. There's the Alabama win. Bryce Young, he looked comfortable from the first snap of the opening game a couple of weeks ago yeah. against Miami. Tell you what, Emory, Emory Jones played well in that game, too. There was some question whether he'd be the guy the whole game, if they would go to Richardson. And Emory Jones played the whole game, and, and he did a lot of really good things in that game. Kevin Harris carries for the South Carolina first down. Here's Matt Berry. All right, Sean, keeping you updated. BYU, Arizona State, it's kicked over on ESPN News. Arizona State fumbled the opening kickoff. BYU scored in the possession, 7 nothing. McDonough, I'm going to fetch some money at the tournament this year. They're going to bid high to play with Barry. <laughs> Matt's always a very popular celebrity. I bet. But I do not think at our auction that he will be bit on the highest. We have Charles Barkley, whose golf game is much improved, by the way. Juju McDowell is the ball carrier. Excuse me, it's a Andre White, the ball carrier. Six minutes to go. It's Matt Luke on the sideline, offensive line coach, former head coach at Ole Miss, and. Yeah. That's a great guy to have on your staff. Yes. He really knows how to coach the offensive line. Well, and when you have former head coaches like Kirby has with Matt Luke and now with Will Muschamp, who's just an analyst, they're another set of eyes who can look at things from the broader picture, you know, of the whole program kind of perspective. Deep throw and a one-handed catch wow. 
by Jalen Brooks. Boy, they've thrown the ball deep effectively when the quarterbacks have had time to get it off. What a catch that's, that's by as good a catch as, you, as you're going to see all season. Tremendous concentration. Right hand. That's beautiful. Great throw, but an even prettier catch. By Brooks, who's been around, started his collegiate career at Wingate. Then went to Tarleton State in Texas, now here in South Carolina. Joined them last year. Wasn't eligible to play for them last year until the second half of that two and eight season. Luke Doty, after the play fake, pulls it down and runs. And he got to the 31 yard line. Well, this is definitely uh, worth, worth another look. What do you think? Uh, top play on the top 10 on Sports Sunday? It'll definitely be on there. I mean, he'd be hard pressed to find a better play from the weekend than that. Man, that is pretty. From the 32, second down and six. Jody, 13 out of 24 for 153. White trying to get outside. The big running back, 6'1", 215, started his career at Florida State. Tavius Brini took him out. Do you think Luke Doty now is likely to be their starter going forward and that Zeb Nolan will probably be a backup? Yeah, I think so. You know, I think Zeb will be a backup. I think he'll be a great resource. And then I think he'll be a really good football coach, too. When, when this season is over and he goes back to being a GA, he comes from a coaching family, obviously, with his dad. That's what he wants to do. He wants to be a coach. White rips through a hole. Got hit hard, but stayed on his feet. Made it to the 10. It was Dan Jackson. Backup safety out of Gainesville, Georgia. He delivered a pretty sturdy hit. A lot of backups in the game right now for Georgia's defense, but again, credit South Carolina for not quitting, not letting down on their effort. They did score the first offensive touchdown against the Georgia regular defense earlier in the in this quarter. And Kirby trying to get the same kind of productivity out of some backups. White, written to the boundary by Dan Jackson again. There are multiple flags on the play. You mentioned having other head coaches on the staff, Will Muschamp in the background, and Kirby said that. You know, he's a great guy to talk to about how should I handle this disciplinary situation. Right. Are we practicing too hard, too long? Holding, offense number 55. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat first down. They coach him hard. You know, it'll be interesting to see, and you know, not sure how soon we'll go off the air here, but I bet there's a lot of those South Carolina players that are going to make a beeline to see Will Muschamp. Mm -hmm. Give him a hug after the game. He recruited most all these guys and gave them an opportunity. Well respected guy in the football community. Well, just the old story, didn't win enough games. That's right. Terrific guy, obviously. Great background, particularly on the defensive side of the ball. But you have to win two games under 500. But everybody we talked to, the players, especially on the South Carolina team now, said they were, yeah. to a man, grateful. They have appreciated the kind of jolt of energy that this new staff has brought in. A lot of the fundamental core values put in place by Shane Beamer, Marshawn Lloyd, the ball carrier. You know what's becoming very uh, trendy now in college football is love. Yeah. And we had Tom Allen, right. LEO, love each other. That's become their mantra in Indiana. And Shane Beamer and his staff and players talk a lot about love. Yeah. Trying to just build unity and chemistry throughout every rung of this organization. Yeah. 
We talk about other things well, too. Competing, We love each other. We right? love and each that's other. That's a big part of our team. Wonderful chemistry. pals. Trying to get outside, Marshawn Lloyd. Josh Hoffman, our producer, is strong like for you. Me, not so much. But uh, here are the other things that they're preaching. Gratitude, you know, be grateful to have the chance to play positive, uh, play college football and be positive about it. Watch be tough, hardworking, competitive, close. There, where you go down there, you see those reminders. Tell you what, and there's you know, nobody better. You and I both agree. In the, all the years we've done this, nobody we enjoy more, respect more than Frank Beaver. Yep. First class all the way. Mm -hmm. Shane said he got a little choked up when the, after the win last week, he saw Frank Beamer <laughs> was a little choked up himself. Great family. Shane's a terrific guy, just like his dad, but work to do in this program as he tries to build it back up. Time for tonight's plan to play, brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. Well, JT Daniels, this was his first pass completion of the game. It is tight end, beautiful touch throw over the linebacker, and he's just been sharp all day. Watch him hold the safety with his eyes on this one. He knows he has the deep post going to the seam, and then a beautifully delivered football for the touchdown for JT Daniels, 23 of 31, 303 yards, and the touchdown did have the one interception. Luke Doty to the end zone, trying to get it to Nick Muse, the tight end. Fifth-year senior started his career, William and Mary. Muse had a huge game against Georgia last year, and they lost the dogs in Columbia. He catches 131 and a touchdown. Pretty good coverage right in position there to knock that football away. Latavius Greeny. Just close friends and loved ones still here at Sanford Stadium, but those who remain are having a good time. Maybe we should join them in that movement. I need to work off that donut a little bit. That, oh, that seemed like a good idea at the time. You ate half a donut. You didn't even eat the whole thing. And you want to go with me to Taste of the Town? Yeah, I want to be your nutrition advisor. <laughs> uh, but no, I really don't. I'd, I'd be I the wrong guy don't. for that yeah. job. You would but, need a quitter box. Yes. I don't, I don't, I don't. Second and 12, they'll take a knee again. Stetson Bennett still out there. So Georgia will go to 3-0. They'll be at Vanderbilt next week. A very good chance to go to 4-0. And a nice return by JT Daniels. I don't think there's any question. He's their starter going forward. And Shane Beamer, his first loss as head coach. Greets his good buddy Kirby Smart, for whom he worked for a couple of years on the Georgia staff. Final score is Georgia 40 and South Carolina 13. For Molly McGrath, Todd Blackledge, and our terrific crew led by Josh Hoffman, Scott Johnson, Sean McDonough saying so long. Let's go to Provo now. Here's Dave Fleming with Rock Gilmore and Stormy Bonatoni. ESPN thanks you for watching this presentation.